Hello, data analytics people. I am Albert Bellamy. This is, what challenge is this? This is the free bootcamp challenge where we are covering all of the videos by Alex Freeberg. We started out working on SQL. We are now working on his Tableau series for reasons that will become apparent shortly. So we took a slight deviation from the SQL series. I think I did eight maybe seven SQL videos. And then from there, I, I did a trip to England. I kind of fallen off of the SQL stuff. And I'm about to do a challenge with Tableau where I'm doing some Tableau certifications here in November. Hopefully everybody joins in on that. I've got plenty to talk about with that. But we've shifted to doing Alex's brief Tableau video series. So what did we do last time? Last time we did his intro video where he went over how to download Tableau. I didn't belabor that because we'll get to that eventually. And then he started talking about just getting a data set, which we did. We got his data set. We got a different data set. We pulled them in. We made some simple visualizations. The video wound up a little longer than I intended. I'm going to try and keep this one a bit shorter. So that's what we did last time. Today we're here to focus on, here, here's Alex. Today we're here to focus on the next video in the series, which you can see is a very short one. It's about six and a half minutes. He only covers a couple of brief topics here. He's gonna talk about bins and calculated fields. So that's quite a quick thing. I urge you to do some reps with that. I'll show you how, yes, I followed along what Alex did with bins and calculated fields on his video game data set, the one he got from Kaggle. I then took it and applied it to one of the NFL draft data sets that I was working with. Urge you to branch out as well, get a few reps on this so you can actually internalize those lessons. Um, okay, so if you're following along kind of Team Bellamy and Challenge Universe and all that sort of thing, you know that I did a post the other day where I talked about my plan very briefly. And I will go through it in a bit more detail here I think when I start, when I finish the, these Alex's series of videos and I start doing my own videos on the Tableau challenge, just devoted to the challenge, I'll get into even more detail about the plan. I've got it all written out right in front of me, notes right here. Here's the long and the short of it. I'm reading this Ultra Learning. This is a brilliant book, it was recommended by, to me, well, recommended to everybody by Ken G. Um, and I just, I find Ken to be someone that, if, if Ken's got a personal habit, I want to copy that personal habit um, in as much as I can stand it. But, um, you know, Ken's pretty intense, but Ken says a book is worth reading and, and worth kind of developing your processes from. That's gospel for me. Ultra Learning is one that I bought. I had it on Kindle for a long time. I would kind of read a few pages at a time. It all seemed very good. On some level, I internalized it, but it took me forever to read it. And then as I'm doing lately, I got a hardcover copy. And what I found when I read through it was I had actually internalized a lot of the lessons from the Kindle read to the point where I was kind of coming up with them and saying, I can implement this in this way. And so there were a whole lot, when I read through it in hardcover, you can see all the notes and all the tabs. There were so many eureka moments that I maybe traced back to reading it on Kindle. And now it comes up as, oh, I'm actually kind of doing this. The one that really hit home for me as far as taking this Tableau desktop test, this one is in, so the fifth principle of ultra learning is called, is retrieval. So in other words, learning something and being able to, to retrieve it and apply. And this section is called, and I kid you not, should you take the final exam before the class even begins? That blew my mind and when I read through this, it took me back to, this is what works for me in Alteryx testing. And of course, Alteryx testing, other than the most high level tests, it's all free. So there's no harm, no foul if you take the test just to get it like kind of a recon look and you're kind of okay with failing the test. You're giving it a quick run through and you're like, okay, I just wanna know what's on the test so I know what to study. And then I'll come back in a week because that's the waiting period and take the test again. Well, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty palatable to do. You're only investing the time to take the test. It doesn't cost anything. The kicker with Tableau tests or any Salesforce tests, you know, Salesforce owns Tableau, is they cost money. 
even this, the initial, the desktop certification test, it costs a hundred dollars. And so the idea of taking a test with the intent to fail and paying a hundred bucks of my hard earned money for it sticks in the craw just a little bit. Um, doesn't, doesn't really sit right. And I had to get good with that based on these principles. Um, and, and it boils down to how do you economize your efforts? How do you become efficient? If this fuzz is out because of my awesome Wi-Fi. How do you build, um, how do you build efficiency into your study plan? And for me, it went straight back to that Alteryx plan. If I go and take the test and I'm perfectly fine with failing, there's no kind of self-recrimination, I'm just God bless my Wi-Fi. Then I can go build a study plan that is geared entirely towards the material the test covers. Some people say, hey, you're, you're teaching to the test, you're studying to the test. Okay, absolutely. It's not on me to make the test cover the actual material that I should know about Tableau. That's on Tableau and Salesforce to build that test. If I pass the test, it's on them to make the test good. If I pass the test, I have proof that I know how to use that platform. I hope that makes sense. It's a, it's a bit of a perspective thing. I know that I have taken tests in the past. Actually, one Salesforce test that I failed and never took again because I just didn't care about actually learning the skills. And I, and I knew the skills, it's just the test was a terrible one. Um, hopefully, the Salesforce tests are better. I hear that they're not, um, not too Salesforce-y. So we shall see. But my plan is I want to take a primer, which right now the Alex the Analyst videos are going to be my primer. The primer is so that I have context for the test. When I take that test, I don't want to be just blown away. Like I don't want to show up and pay for a test in C++ because I've never studied it. So I wouldn't have any context. And I'm not going to sit there and copy down questions. I need a mental map of what the environment looks like. So right now I'm developing a mental map of what Tableau looks like. I know what Tableau looks like, but I need to, when I see a question and it says, you know, it's the specific thing about building a dashboard and I don't necessarily know the exact answer, but I know what a dashboard is supposed to look like in Tableau. So when it says, what ways can you position this element in a dashboard or how can you, you know, edit the title or something like that, I won't know the answer but I will absolutely understand the context because I've had a primer in Tableau. I've done some things in Tableau. I'm refreshing some knowledge now with these uh, Alex Freeberg videos. So my plan going forward is I'm going to take this week, get a primer. I've scheduled a test for Saturday, seven o'clock Saturday morning. Yeah, girl. You know, I'm up at seven on a Saturday morning. Anyway, um, I tend to get up at five on weekends. But I'm going to take the test at 7 on Saturday morning. Good Lord willing, fail it. And then the next week, so the week prior to the 30-day challenge, I will take that next week to build my study plan. So fail the test, come straight out, out of the testing environment, brain dump everything that I remember from the test. Then go back like 24 hours later, you know, mind gets a chance to reset, trying to remember a few more things. But based on that, based on the going through the test, failing it, brain dumping all of the information, I'm going to build a plan to study for that test. Now, the kicker for this, the added kicker, not just spending slash wasting the money, depending on your point of view, the kicker for this is this test isn't all that difficult, as I understand it. It can get a little bit detail-oriented, but I've had multiple people say, hey, you use Tableau, you could do a quick crash course study session and pass the test. I've got the book. It's not up here, but I've got the book on passing this test. I could easily just probably study that book and go through a few exercises and be fine. The added so what for this exercise is I want to build a map, right? Model where I can do ultra learning projects on topics that are more difficult. 
So one that I plan on doing in the future is the, the actual the Tableau Data Analytics Certificate. And for that, that, that is much more rigorous a test than the desktop certificate. And so this is going to build me a model whereby I can take on these projects and go, one month I'm going to burn hot, I'm going to study Tableau, and I'm going to pass the data analytics certificate. Maybe this is crazy, but I also want to do the Power BI, the PL300. And some people have told me, hey, that would, uh, that would be a tall order in 30 days. Folks, that sounds like a challenge to me. And so, yeah, I'm anticipating early next year, I'm going to give a run at that one. I use Tableau occasionally. I never use Power BI. So that is a real daunting challenge because I don't even have, have context for Power BI. I've picked it up and played with it once or twice, and that was ages ago. So that's the one that really kind of gets me salivating. Like, can I do it? Can I pull that off? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that the effort will be valuable. And I know that once I build this model of one week primer, take the test, pay for the test, fail the test, and then take one week to build a plan, and then 30 days, burn hot. 30 days of the ultra learning project, and at the end of that 30 days, retake the test, and then the plan is to pass it. So we will see. This is a kind of a trial run. We did a very, a very unplanned kind of just see if I can make all the content and get people interested and all that sort of stuff. That was the Alteryx month, the 30 day challenge that we did in September. And that for me, knowledge wise, was, was low hanging fruit because I knew I could just go, I didn't need to study for those tests. I could go take those micro cert tests and pass them on my worst day. I use Alteryx every day. I teach Alteryx every day. So that was kind of a very easy run of get, getting the environment together. This one will be, yes, I know it's not a very difficult test, but let's see if I can execute this plan and see if it structurally it works. And then the plan is early next year, I'm thinking maybe February, we do one that actually is a challenge. And then I want to start building these other skills and the 30 day burn hot model. It just appeals to me. I just, I do well with it. I learn well with it. I don't get burned out. I don't get bored. It kind of appeals to the way that I learn and the way that I build skills. So with all that, I have run my mouth for 13 solid minutes. Now let's get into the point of this video. And that is to continue on with this challenge. Let me pause the recording. I'm going to go knock out half of my push up. This time, maybe I'll actually remember to do the other half before I kill the recording, but be back in a second. Okay, 25 down. Let's go ahead and check in with Mr. Freeberg. Hopefully my sound is working today. Let me actually, let me remove him real quick. Stop screen, present. I set this up last night and now I wanna make sure that's all good. Okay, entire screen, yes. Share system audio, yes. All right, if you can't hear Alex, I'm terribly sorry. I have kind of a janky setup up here. One of these days I'll make it quality. Okay, there's Alex. I'm even turned the right way now. I've got the monitor over here so I can turn towards him and it looks good on the screen. Nah, let's make Alex big and me small. Okay, Alex, what do you got for us? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be going over bins and calculated fields. If you can't hear him, I turn the closed caption on. I love how it says music. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first thing that we're going to look at are bins. And bins are basically just groupings or ranges of numerical values. So we cannot create bins uh, for genre, name, platform, or anything like that. We have to do something... Uh, with this sign right here, which means that it is a numeric. So year or all of this sales data or this ranking data. And we're going to use what we worked on in our very first tutorial. And so what we're going to be using to kind of demonstrate how bins work is this year right down here. So right now we have a range of 1993 all the way up to 2018. And we're going to create some bins to group and create ranges for these years. And it's pretty simple. All we're going to do 
So I'm going to come right over here to year and this little drop down on the Speedable side. And we're going to go down to create and go down to bins. There you go. Now it's going to say the size of bin and it's going to give you a recommendation based off of the. Okay. We'll go ahead and skip ahead. Um, let me show you. Oh, the switcher is over here. That's interesting. There we go. Okay, so here's my mirror of Alex's dashboard. Um, so what he goes in the head, head and does is he clicks the drop down on year um, and he goes to create and bins. So it brings up this interface that says, um, do you want a new field name? We'll just go ahead and leave it year bin is fine. Now it's gonna tell you the size of the bins. The range of the years is from 93 to 18. Um, and what Alex does, he bins it into five years. That's fine. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it creates a pretty good visualization. So no need to vary that, but you can get a suggest bin size here and it, it kind of divvies it up um, and it will make the, the, uh, the data look pretty, but really is 3.11 a good, I mean, it's like a, a 5K, but uh, 3.11, is that a good division of years? I would say probably not. So let's go with five. It'll show you the min and max there. Um, and you click okay. So nothing happens right off the bat. You have to actually add that to your shelves in order to get it to show anything. And what we're gonna do first here is gonna make it look a little bit crazy because we already have year up here as our columns, so as our x-axis. Now we're gonna add, you can see that it changes it here. Um, if I can, do I have zoom it on? I don't. God, I'm a terrible. Anyway, um, you can see this here, it's got like a little picture of a histogram. Um, so that indicates that you've got a categorical variable there. So let's go ahead and put the year bin up here. Okay, it gets a little crazy. It bins the years and then it does the whole graph for each. Let's pull this measure off of here. Oh, pulled the wrong one. Silly me, this is why we do rehearsals. There we go, okay. And so now you get kind of this cool, it's a, a stacked bar graph. If you click show me, you can probably get a different visualization. No big deal, but stacked bar graph. In here, you may have noticed that there's some null values um, the next thing Alex does in the video is he gets rid of these null values. Obviously, disclaimer, you don't want to randomly get rid of null values. You want to go figure out why you have null values. This is not a data set we care about. If you were doing this at, at your work, you definitely need to, <laughs> you do not want to hide the fact that you have null values. But here, we'll go ahead and exclude that to make it a little clearer. Now you might want to monkey with your bins a little bit because, I mean, check this out. You've got 1990 where there's just a teensy amount of the, you know, 90 to 94 bin. There's like nothing there. So you would probably want to do something with that. Maybe even hide that, maybe adjust the bins a little bit, but, uh, yeah, so right here, but you can see that the stacked bar chart is pretty informative. There are limitations to a stacked bar chart. I don't know if Alex will get into that in the uh, later uh, videos. I know the next video is a lot more on specific visualizations. You can see the stacked bar chart, it can be kind of tough to compare apples to apples. So here, racing games. You can see okay, it got big and then it got bigger and then it got smaller and then it got smaller still. It's just difficult because they're not lined up. So there are other ways to kind of show this where you can compare different categories. Some, okay, like fighting games. It can be kind of difficult to see, okay, did fighting games increase from 95, the 95 bin to the 2000 bin? It looks like it probably decreased. You can look at the measures, but just eyeing it up, you're like, you know, did action games increase or decrease in these three bins? It's tough to see. So stack bar chart has its limitations, but it looks really cool. And it can show you, hey, the total got huge in the early 2000s, dropped down a little bit. And then I think it's the, the time frame is cut off at like 2018, but clearly like it's, it's experiencing a decline don't know why that is free games, downloadable game content for phones, or maybe people are just playing video games less. I, I doubt it, but, um, okay. So cool stuff there. And you can incorporate that into uh, a visualization. 
Let's go ahead and click back over to Alex, and then I'll show you how I applied that to my NFL. The information that is already provided, the min and the max, uh, the ranges of these values. You know, you don't have to do this, but think too. Think about why they might be doing that. Uh, we're gonna change these things up here. Oh, it's, this is no longer just uh, one, two, three. Slice things See up. really quick, and it spits out for us. Now, I did look at the data when um, okay, I was so prepping for this. There are some nulls in the years. Um, and so all we're gonna do for this is we're just gonna go like this. Or I've made and we're going to exclude the nulls. He was first. Uh, probably not something you should be doing, Andy. Excluding nulls. And it includes 19. And so just really quick game sales. Some so these are global sales for, for these video games. You can do it on years like we did, and it can be very, very useful. And so the next part of the video, which is calculated fields. Uh, right over here on this left hand side, we see that the global sales, which are in millions, goes all the way. Okay. Um, I did. I did work the same thing with the uh, the NFL draft dashboard. No, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. I basically did the same thing. So year, um, let's create a bin or create bins. Um, it says two point eight nine. So we've got the years nineteen eighty four to twenty sixteen. Um, so that's what thirty two years. Um, what kind of bins could we put that into? Let's, it recommends three, let's go four. Let's see what that does, okay? So we pull that. Um, so it's showing the, the number of players drafted. Oh, Wi-Fi getting cranky. It's showing the number of players drafted. Uh, it's fairly consistent just because it's, mostly a function of the length of the draft. So nothing too fascinating to see here, but just another rep and show you a way that you can, uh, you can build this. Um, I did work a couple of bins with this other visualization, really didn't do much. So uh, nothing to play with there. Let's go back to Alex and you can talk about calculated fields. All the way up to 900 million and created these beautiful bins right down here. But let's look at within these from 1999 to 2015, let's see which of the calculation. Um, we'll create a, our own calculation later. There's a quick that. table calculation. But I'll show you, you that. The total, some real work that you not, save that not calculation. Not a real dramatic so effect on percentage the Percentage of global sales. Over here, you can actually save that calculation. So we can, now really quick, just to show you something that you can do, if you click control and you drag this over here, you can actually save that calculation. So we can yeah, say so you can save that calculation of, as a measure global sales. so it's always there and it actually saves it as uh, you know a measure for us so that was a quick calculation but let's look how to actually create a calculated field so if we do this right here what is going to come up is just the global sales and you can do a lot of what you would basically do in excel multiplication division subtraction a few other okay so we can do some of that um let's go ahead and continue modifying his dashboard so the first thing he does is he does a quick table calculation um so sum of global sales and he goes to quick table calculation down here and he goes to percent of total. Now this isn't gonna change the visualization at all. All it's gonna change is that Y axis. So you can see that we've gone to percent of global sales right here. And so yeah, viz didn't change at all. Proportions didn't change. All it's showing now is this is the percent of everything in the graph. So this 2000 to 2004 bin, close to 30% of all the stuff in the graph um, this 2015 to 18, I think it is, been like 5%, 5.5%. Um, so not super dramatic, but the next thing he shows you is hold the control key, drag that down, and you can see that that saves the, the uh, calculated or the quick ca table calculation as a measure. So if we want to save that as a measure, let's go QT calc. Okay, um, and now that's embodied up here. Now, if we go to, um, let's put sales back up there, global sales, and pull the quick table calculation down. Now he goes into how to make an actual, uh, an actual calculated measure. So let's go global sales, and let's go create a calculated field, or calculated field, not, not a measure. Okay, and of course it pops up on the wrong monitor. There we go. Okay, so calculation two and, uh, silly thing, don't do that. Okay, so calculation two, I mean, you can use any of your operators. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. What he does is he takes global sales minus, put in the square bracket, 
and start typing and it's going to give you suggestions. So you can pick EU sales because you put in a square bracket, which indicates a variable and then EU sales pops up. And just like in Alteryx, all your syntax lights up pretty colors, which means that the syntax is correct. And then you get a verification down at the bottom of that, uh, that window says the calculation is valid. So your syntax is correct, everything's lit up, something's gonna happen. May or may not be exactly what you intended, but your syntax is good, so it's not gonna kick you an error. Okay, and let's go okay. And so that's calculation two, now we can rename it. Um, let's go global minus EU. Okay, and then if we wanna add that up here, now we get a, a double graph. Um, so here we've got global minus EU and global sales, all good. And then if you check over in your dashboard, um, you'll see that that's reflected right here. Now it's a little mashed. It, it looks a bit funky. Not sure I would go with that and necessarily um, run with it. I think I actually did save that to Tableau Public. Let's go back to Alex real quick and just finish out the video. Other things, but we're gonna keep it super, super simple. Open bracket. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna. Okay. And let's draw so it. it. Sales we have prop puts it in there. And so this video, I hope you learned. Just be sure okay. to like and, and subscribe goes. below, and I will see you in the next video. All good. Let's minimize that. Let's close that out. Okay. And then I did take it and saved it. Okay, so I just saved the visualization. I didn't save the dashboard. Um, so you can see that's. Let me go ahead and star my. Oh, I can't star my. Come on now. Dang it. Okay. Um, so I did post that to Tableau Public. Um, can't, for some reason, it won't let me star my own visualization. Um, but that is another thing. So yet another principle from Ultra Learning. And let me give it one more pitch. Where is it? Where is it? I don't want to say it wrong. Feedback. Principle six is feedback. Right after the, the chapter on retention that I was talking about. Or retrieval, sorry feedback folks you need to if you're putting these things out there if you're doing these exercises put them on your tableau public put them out on linkedin let people evaluate them invite criticism and review of your work and you will be better for it trust me this was a hump that i had to get past i had to get past the urge to make every linkedin post perfect you will see my linkedin posts are not perfect this morning, I posted a video on LinkedIn. I had to get past the urge to make that video perfect. I did do a couple of takes. This one right here, first take. And no editing. You know, I paused it to do my push-ups, but that's about it. So, all right. So we are through Alex's video. Let me go ahead and drop that because I tend to forget to do that. My stuff's posted on Tableau Public. Yours should be too. Please go ahead and do that. No, I don't want to save changes to the workbook. Um, and yeah, go through this, do the reps, do some variations on what Alex is doing. Get some practice on it. Speaking of practice, I owe you 25 push-ups. Let me go get those right now. <laughs> Wi-Fi. Hi, Jinx. We have fulfilled the challenge. Um, I've done my 50 push-ups. We've gone through another Alex Freeberg free boot camp video. We are completing the Tableau series. This Saturday, I'm going to take the desktop test, fail it, come back and report to you what I found. And then next week, I'm going to build my plan for study. Folks, I hope that you're following along with me. My loss is your gain. I'm going to spend 100 bucks, and I'm going to come back and give you all of my lessons learned. And hopefully, we can work through this together. And I can get some people certified in Tableau uh, as desktop specialists. So next video, we are going to go into is a bit more in-depth where Alex is going to go into specifics of different visualizations. Look forward to that. I'll have that out in a couple of days. Folks, I think all there is left to say is stick with me and I'll make you a genuine Tableau hero just like me.